Hello everyone. As you prepare to register for the spring 2025 semester, I wanted to uh, send out a little video explaining your options for Bio 151 Labs. Okay, so again, as, as you prepare to register here come the end of or October, um, most of you will be taking uh, Bio 151 Labs, so Biology 2 Labs. Okay? You essentially have three options available to you. And so I wanted to summarize sort of the overall picture and those three options um, that you have available. As a biology major, we recommend that you take one of the two stream options, but there is a third option. Um, and currently those will not, all three options work the same in the curriculum. And so it, it's not necessarily a big deal if you don't do one of the stream options. Uh, but the stream options better prepare you for courses that are required later in the biology curriculum. If at any point you have any questions, please feel free to talk to your faculty advisors, so Jill or Polly, or if they happen to be another faculty member in biological sciences, um, or you can talk to any of the faculty that are involved in the lab options. So I'm Dr. Uh, Matt Smith. I coordinate all three options. So you'll be dealing with me in the spring, regardless of what option you choose. Um, and there are some similarities across all three options because I do coordinate, right? We, everyone will be learning to code and analyze data in our studio. Um, we'll all be learning some basic scientific method and experimental design skills, uh, but the two stream options go a little bit further. Okay? Dr. Jenny Mumpson, uh, is the faculty member associated with the health and wellness um, decisions stream option. And Dr. Giancarlo Lopez Martinez is the faculty uh, member sort of behind or in charge of diet and exercise physiology, which we'll learn about here in a second. So again, feel free to talk to any of us if you have questions at any point. Okay? As I said, there's three pathway options, one standard or traditional option and two options that we call streams. Okay. The standard option is going to be much like your Biology 150 lab experience. This, um, these labs, though, are targeted at non-biology majors. So they're still targeted at science majors or STEM majors, but not biology specifically. We do three inquiry-based labs throughout the semester. So we spend three or four weeks on a topic, probably four weeks on a topic, and then move on. Um, these are going to be post bait point-based grading with both in-class and out-of-class assignments, um, in-class uh, activities, out-of-class readings, and video lectures and quizzes as well. The stream options, these are the ones that are only for biology majors, so you'll be in a section with only other biology majors. Um, no of the other majors are allowed into those two options. These better prepare you for your cure requirements. So your biology 270, 271, 272, whichever one you were going to take. All biology majors have to take one cure for their biology curriculum. And so these two stream options help prepare you for that, right? Each of the streams follows a major research theme and we'll talk about each one in turn. Again, you're gonna learn about experimental design and relevant research methods in that theme uh, during the semester. You'll conduct a section-wide project towards the end of the semester. Um, and these two streams will prepare you to enter either 271 or 272, um, preferably the following fall, right? But any semester that you enroll in. You also generally will have the same instructor for both semesters, the 151 lab and the associated 271 or 272. So you'll get to know your instructor really well, they'll get to know you, um, and it helps make the transition even smoother. Um, it helps make the, the cure, the 271, 272, that much easier. Okay? Um, and both of those options use standard-based grading um, instead of point-based grading. There again will be some in-class and out-of-class assignments and activities. Um, so the workload is very similar between the two. They all use uh, the same software. Um, and cover some of the same skills, but the two stream options uh, go more in depth on some of the skills, helping prepare you for that cure, <clears throat> excuse me, in subsequent semesters. So again, the standard or traditional option, again, um, much like you've experienced this fall in Bio 150L, we will cover uh, metabolism of organisms. So we'll likely look at uh, the metabolic rate of roaches and how that's affected by things like gender and um, exercise re regimes. 
Uh, we'll look at a, a genetics uh, unit where we'll um, look at the PTC gene to see if you're a taster, a super taster, or a non-taster. Um, so we'll basically isolate and extract our own DNA and run that on a gel to visualize our genotype uh, along with um, our phenotype. And then we have a third unit that is sort of yet to be just determined, um, but it'll pick up a different sort of um, biology topic. It won't be metabolic rate, it won't be uh, molecular and basis. Uh, but again, we do three sort of four week lab units where we introduce a technique, um, talk a little bit about the basic skills, then we collect uh, data as a class and analyze that data. And then outside of class, you're responsible for sort of conducting the, the analysis and interpretation. Okay. Um, again, we learned some of the same basic skills here that you would in the two stream options, just not as in-depth or through as many iterations. And so it's not that you couldn't go from the standard or traditional option into one of the cures. It's just that the streams better prepare you for those cures, um, especially if you stick with the same research theme. Okay. So the first research theme, uh, stream one, is diet and exercise physiology. This focuses on how manipulation of diet and exercise affect organism physiology. Uh, here we use insect models as our organisms of interest uh, because we can obtain high numbers and easily work with them. Um, but the research questions themselves relate to human and other vertebrates, right? So we might ask ourselves, how does the Atkins diet uh, affect our physiological function, right? Or how does the keto diet affect our physiological function, right? And we use insects as our model organisms, but the, we can ask questions that we're interested in in humans or other mammals, right? Um, so really we're trying to find or research the connection between diet and exercise and performance. So we can look at the quality of a diet or an exercise regime. Is, does that affect the physiology or performance of an organism, right? Is it the quantity of a certain food or a certain exercise that, that makes a difference, right? Do we have to have a diverse diet or do a lot of different ac exercises in order to increase our performance, right? Um, we can look at a lot of different questions that relate to diet and exercise physiology. Sometimes we'll investigate just a diet question, sometimes just an exercise question, and sometimes we look at the interaction of both. Again, using insects as our models, but we can sort of ask questions we're interested in as of ourselves as humans is what happens if I eat a more diverse diet versus a less diverse diet and how does that affect my performance, right? My locomotion ability, my, my sprint speed, right? So in this stream, you'll learn techniques that will allow you to sort of quantify body composition. So we'll teach you how to do some biochemistry where you can basically look at, okay, this organism was 27% fat, uh, 42% protein and you know, whatever left was carbs, right? So we can look at the three macromolecules that make up the, the, the biomass of organisms and we can see what percentage or exactly how much of those macromolecules an organism is made of, right? So does a high fat diet lead to organisms that have higher lipid content or is that lipid converted into proteins, right? Um, we can assess performance. So whether it's looking at survival ship, uh, flight activity, flight duration, locomotion, um, how often they're active, how much they reproduce. There's a lot of different performance metrics that we can do. And so we'll cover a range of those um, and talk about different ways that we can um, quantify those data. And then we'll look at some other physiological metrics as well. Like we can, we can look at gene expression, right? So uh, not necessarily if a gene is present or absent, but whether the expression is high or low, right? So again, maybe we're interested in, in a high fat diet. So we look at a, a gene that is related to lipids and see if the expression of that gene changes under different diets. Um, we can also look at um, teaching you how to do some assays, like some hormone assays or some vitamin assays to see if those levels increase or decrease depending on a certain exercise routine or a, a diet. So currently the, um, the students who took this Last spring are in um, Bio 271 this semester, and they're developing projects that look at how nicotine affects uh, butterflies, both in flight and reproduction, how caffeine affects uh, roach survival and memory, spatial memory. So they're running roaches through a maze to see if caffeine affects their learning and spatial abilities. 
Um, we're manipulating some cricket diets with um, sort of high sugar diet versus a more natural diet to see how that changes their physiology. Uh, there's a group that's looking at uh, supplementing fruit flies with uh, a vitamin, right, to see if that hurts or helps its performance. Um, there's a group working on pill bugs and changing the amount of protein in their diet to see if that has any consequences on their physiology. Um, there's a group working on meal beetles to see if they can eat styrofoam. This is a potential way for bioremediation, um, help alleviate some waste that we produce, right? Um, and then there's uh, a, a large number of other questions. So we've got about eight groups this semester. Each group came up with its own research project um, using methods they learned in the Bio 151 labs the previous spring. Again, the faculty member sort of behind this research theme is Dr. Giancarlo Lopez Martinez, and feel free to ask him any questions. Stream two is health and wellness decisions. Um, so here, uh, you'll explore how people make everyday decisions about their health and their well-being. Again, you're going to desert, um, learn the techniques necessary to conduct this type of research. Here, the student groups are actually focusing on NDSU undergraduate populations, so your peers, right? And what they're trying to do is gain insights into how or why students make choices that affect their physical and mental well-being, right? So again, some of the student groups this semester are looking at how much caffeine is too much caffeine and how does that, how does your caffeine consumption change as you prepare for an exam or um, have a stressful period in your life, right? We have another group that's researching naps. So what's the best time of the week, weekday to take a nap? How long, right? And how does that affect your mental and physical well-being? Uh, we have a group looking at how often that um, you should work out to stay physically and mentally fit, right? Um, there's another group that's looking at sort of your support network and how that is related to your mental health or mental well-being, right? So in this stream, you're going to learn how to conduct projects that will uh, survey or use NDS, un, NDSU undergrads as their study population to better understand how the decisions they make help their physical and mental well-being. And so it's been really fun this semester to watch students design projects about things that they're really concerned about, whether it's their mental health or their physical well-being. So again, in this stream, you'll learn to design and conduct undergraduate surveys. So you'll learn how to write really good non-biased survey questions that will allow you to answer the research questions that you're interested in. You'll learn how to conduct journal or diary studies. Um, again, these are tools to provide insights into how people make decisions or how their line of thought, either following a decision or approaching a decision, right? And then you learn a, a suite of qualitative data analysis and thematic coding techniques. This allows you to work with sort of non-numeric data to investigate trends and patterns, okay? So in these projects, you're not necessarily working with pure numbers because again, this is asking people their opinions or their habits or both, right? Or how they feel about a certain topic. And so this, uh, in this stream, we'll teach you how to use those types of data and still be able to analyze, interpret those data, okay? Um, and you'll be working with uh, Emily Hackerson uh, in both semesters. Uh, she's a really great graduate student. She'll be the one in the classroom. I'm helping her coordinate. And then again, Dr. Jennifer Mumpson is the faculty member behind this, right? Um, and likely we'll be working with some of the camp uh, campus resources, so either the Wellness Center or the Counseling Center to sort of help them so the data that students collect can help them provide insights into how NDSU undergrads are making their decisions and how those resources or those centers can help students live happier, healthier lives, whether here at NDSU. If you're interested in one of the two uh, stream options, which I, I hope you are, again, those are tailored just for biology students to help better uh, situate you for future courses. The health and wellness decisions, you want to sign up for either section 2, 8, or 14. There's one section on Tuesday, one section on Wednesday, and one section on Thursday. Okay, um, Those are for biology students only. Biology majors are the only ones with permission to sign up for those. If you're interested in the diet and exercise physiology stream, that's section 10, 11, or 15. Again, one section on Tuesday, one on Thursday, one on Wednesday. So one of these six sections is gonna be the best option for biology majors. If you're really not interested in those or they don't work with your schedule, all of the other sections are just the standard or traditional lab sections. 
Those will be the ones in AG Hill 214. The streams have their own rooms, so health and wellness decisions will be in AG Hill 216, and diet and exercise physiology will be in AG Hill 200. So we have nine sections of the standard 151 lab, though uh, there are sections on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We don't have any lab sections on Mondays and Fridays currently. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I hope this helps clarify some things.